once I became a flight attendant, I realized not everybody actually can speak English really well. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Um, this is again a bit of an informal thing. But anyway, I just would like to say hi. I'm sorry if you're hearing a lot of background noise again because you know what I mean. I don't have my microphone yet, but I promise I already bought a microphone and it should be on its way here. So for the meantime, I hope you don't mind the background noise. But anyway, for those who are new to this channel, my name is Pia. I used to be a flight attendant for over 10 years, 10 years and eight months to be exact, actually, um, in the Middle East and 12 years as an OFW. OFW means Overseas Filipino Worker. So my husband and I used to work in, uh, in, in Qatar and now we're back here in the Philippines, hopefully for good. And um, yeah, I'm, I just want to like just talk to you about um, my advice to those who are aspiring to become a flight attendant. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of my story when I was still applying to become a flight attendant. Uh, people most of the time are afraid to apply, aside from the physical aspects, people are scared to apply because of communication skills. So most of the international airlines, they all require fluency in English. And I have to tell you guys that when I first started, I was not confident in talking in English. Even until now, I still have a lot of words that I can't express. That's why I just have to switch from English to Tagalog because it's hard. And I admit, um, English was not my first language. But the best part is that I keep on talking to you in English so that I get comfortable every day right so this is my advice to you by the way um, I applied to become a flight attendant when I was 26 years old and when I first started um, like I said I was not fluent in English but I used to work in a call center before so at some point um, I would say I have a little bit of a background already in how to actually communicate with other people. When you are in a call center, normally uh, the language is in English. Okay, so basically I got uh, I got a bit of a practice in there, and I would say, and even until now, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable with talking to you in English, but I still try my best to actually communicate to you in English. But this is what I always tell the crew because once you're already in the airline, this is what I realize. Um, I don't know, but the airline itself says that you have to be fluent in English. But once I became a flight attendant, I realized not everybody actually can speak English really well. Like I admit, I would say I think 50% of the population cannot really speak very well English in my previous airline before. And this is why I encourage you to keep on just practicing the English language because you don't really have to have a perfect grammar for you to be able to become a flight attendant. Because what they just want is for you to be able to communicate to the passengers, to other people. And I think that's all they're looking for. It's not all about um, having a perfect um, Eng English grammar. As long as you're able to deliver the message, then you should be okay. So um, I would like to 
address this to all those who are aspiring to become a flatten that it's okay if you don't have a perfect grammar because as long as you're able to relay the message you should be okay the only sad thing is that you know though the qualification of a flight attendant is so simple the problem is that the competition is really really tough like really tough this is what our trainers used to tell us before that in every 5,000 people or applicants applying to become a flight attendant only one gets the job and I believe it is the reality because you can even see it in social media <laughs> can't explain that anymore but I think you know social media can can actually tell you everything so yeah one in every 5,000 people gets the job of a flight attendant but I'm not saying that the qualification is hard actually it is very straightforward but every airline has different um, qualifications you just have to look into it but with my previous airline fluency in English is is a must but again fluency fluency in English doesn't mean that you should have a perfect grammar second thing is you have to have um, you should be able to reach at least 212 centimeters on tiptoes and uh, I think high school diploma I think that's it you should be healthy at least and a team player I think that's all they're actually looking for the problem is that <laughs> there's just a lot of competition out there guys so you just have to make sure that at some point the recruiters will be able to pick you and so you will be given a chance to at least speak because sometimes you go in a um, interview you just say hi hello you're given 30 seconds only saying hi hello and then that's it you they don't even give you the chance to be on the next stage so which is really sad but this is the reality yeah so that's it um again Fluency in English doesn't mean that you need to have a perfect grammar. All they need is that you'll be able to communicate your message to other people. And you should be able to also understand the message. So, vice versa. So, I guess that's it. Until my next story again. <laughs>